All right, well, two questions for Avalanche defenseman Kel McCarr. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Kel. Um, I don't believe you're on the ice at this point, but you're on the bench. Did you hear any explanation about uh, why too many men was called in overtime? Uh, no, I mean, um, I was right there where uh, Miko and Nate did the exchange. Um, I mean, Miko hopped on, hopped on the ice and the puck wasn't even anywhere near near our bench and then it ended up coming over. Um, I was right there. I thought Nate was off off the ice um, and Miko kind of let it go uh, a couple extra feet behind him just to make sure they didn't touch it. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen a great angle on the camera yet, but um, – Overall, I mean, right there, it didn't look like it was too many men to me. It's a tough call to make an OT, but um, it is what it is. And uh, I mean, uh, obviously, we didn't get the one point that we wanted, but um, at the end of the day, we still battled back again. And um, yeah. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Is that one of those endings where you can just kind of call it a wash because of how it ended and just take the one point and move on? Or is there still a little bit of frustration knowing that you guys could have ended it there? Oh yeah, it's. Uh, I think this is the most frustrated our group's been all year. To be completely honest with you, um, it's. Uh, it's not fun when a game ends like that. Obviously, we put ourselves in a bad spot at the at the end of um, of regulation, taking the too many men there, um, but we were able to to kill that off and then um, have a uh, a couple of good chances in OT. But no, I mean coming off the ice, and I think you even saw guys right uh, come off the bench right right when they scored there. Um, some guys were pretty. Uh, pretty livid with uh with how that ended but th that's just the way the game goes at the end of the day and um, I guess you have to respect the ref's decision but definitely a tough call in the moment Terry Fry Colorado Hockey Now have you guys been playing with fire getting behind coming back getting behind coming back and did it finally come back to haunt you tonight yeah I mean obviously it's not an ideal um scenario for us uh having to come from behind every single night but um, we're, we're confident in the abilities that we have as a team. We've had some slow starts lately, and then we have to kind of dig ourselves out of the hole. And um, luckily, our, our shovels have been pretty big lately, and we've been able to score a few. So um, it, it's not something that's hopefully going to continue throughout the year. We know that we have to be better at the beginning of games. And um, obviously, they spotted two tonight even, and um, we had to work our, ourselves uh, ourselves back. But, um, yeah, at the end of the day, it's just the – we know we have the group that can come back from it, which is, let's just not put ourselves in that spot. Back to Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, defensively, I guess, what do you as a group need to need to tighten up? Yeah, I would say they're a very, uh, very high pressure team, especially in uh, in uh, like our, our own zone when we're trying to break the puck out. Um, they're basically a five man unit press um, right up against us. So. Um, no, for us, it, it definitely starts at the back end. And I think um, uh, all of us at the beginning of the game, like I said, started a little bit slow and um, it showed we were kind of running around the zone. And, and when that happens, things start to open up. Um, so it's it's just something that, uh, again, it will, will need to be fixed. And um, we know that we had a slow start today as a, as a decor. And uh, I think for us, it's just getting back to the basics and um, simplifying everything. And that's what we started to do in the second. And, and the game kind of started to go our way. Last one here for Kale Terry Fry, Colorado Hockey Now. How much of a setback was it to lose Bo Byram at that time and uh, for tonight and however long it will be? Yeah, obviously he's uh, he's a very important player for us um, and, and he will continue to be in the future here. And it's unfortunate to see, um, see him not in tonight, but I'm not, I'm not too sure what's going on. Obviously it was a late late news for me coming to the rink, but um, overall, uh, we, we love the guy and he's a big, uh, big part of our room and, and we definitely need him. All right. Thank you, Kale. Thank you. We'll take questions for Avalanche head coach, Jared Bednar, Peter Baugh, the athletic. Hey, Jared, to start, um, Bo Byron was announced shortly before the game, obviously not not active tonight was is this health related or is it something else and do you have a sense of how long he'll be out for i i don't know how long he's going to be out for he he's um didn't play because of personal reasons and that that's basically all i know so um we'll respect that and um hopefully he can get back to us here in the near future eric dean mile high sports jared what were your opinions there on that final call and were you given any kind of an explanation on the ref on what they saw? No, I didn't get any explanation. And I mean, 
I mean, our guys are we're frust- they're frustrated over it because I still haven't seen the too many men. I've already looked at the video, so that's where it is. Jesse Montano, DNVR. Coach, does that losing on that kind of penalty call kind of take any of the positives out of this game? Obviously, second night of a back-to-back, you guys battle to get back in the game, then to lose on that. How does that kind of affect how you guys feel about this game? Um, well, for now, there's a frustration level in there because it's like we have a high standard of, you know, what we're trying to accomplish and we're not, you know, we don't like leaving points on the table. That's a value could turn out to be a valuable point. And tonight we didn't get it. So, um, we don't, we don't look at it in terms of second half of a back to back and all that stuff. We just focus on winning the hockey game. And, um, so I, when my thoughts on the game are, we need to be better early and, um, like their resiliency again and um got to make sure we're playing the way we played sort of in the second half of that game again tonight for a full 60 minutes that that's the way I look at that game Terry Fry Colorado Hockey now I asked this of Kale and I'll ask this of you have you been playing with fire getting behind coming back getting behind coming back and did it come back to haunt you for once tonight have we been playing with fire? Is that the question, Terry? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly it's not our goal to be coming from behind every night. We have to have a better start. Um, we have to get engaged earlier. Um, I think that we we're close at times tonight. Like, I thought we did a good job responding, but the way some of the games go, they scored early and – um, they get the power play and, and, um, we didn't capitalize on our first couple chances on the power play, which could have made a big difference there. So it took us a little bit while longer to get the spark, but, um, I think that, you know, we try to approach it with our guys that, you know, the first goal doesn't determine the outcome of the game. It's what the score, and I don't care what the score is after one or after two or after 30 minutes or after 50 minutes, I only care what the score is at the end of the game. So, um, at this point in the year, I'm evaluating the way our team plays, the way we compete, the way we execute, and then, um, you know, how hard we work to get the two points. And we've been getting the two points here recently. Uh, so when I look at those games, I, I just feel like we can be better for 60 minutes. And it wouldn't, wouldn't make me feel any better if we went out and scored the first two and then had a 10 minute lull or 20 minute lull in the middle middle of the game. Uh, Our goal is to be playing our best hockey for a full 60 minutes every single night, regardless of the circumstances. So that's what we're trying to build towards, trying to be perfect. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Jared, with with Darcy tonight, I know it's kind of a mix of the two, but how, how many of those goals were ones he would want back and how many were more defensive breakdowns that you guys allowed? Almost every goal, um, every night is a defensive breakdown or some something somebody could have done differently. Um, Cause if you're giving up any type of shot, there's something that you could be doing better. Uh, I think that Darcy's game was okay tonight. Like I think that, that he, we've seen him play better. Uh, I think that, um, you know, tonight wasn't his best. And, but like a lot of other guys, I don't, you know, like, I think you got to play a full 60 minutes in order to be uh, considered a a real good game. You know, you can't, you got to be ready to start the game on time and you got to be ready to finish it and and be trusted upon for that full 60 minutes or more. And uh, tonight, you know, probably wasn't his best night, but I can say that for a lot of guys in our room. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Jared, come, uh, sorry, not kill. Uh, JT Comfort blocked that shot late in the game. Is is he doing okay? Have you had a chance to see him since the game ended? I haven't seen him. Um, I'm assuming that he'll he'll be okay. He looked like he fronted it pretty good and took it off the shin pads. And that's kind of the way our night was going a little bit tonight with some of the bounces. I mean, he does the right thing. He gets the block and the puck <laughs> lands right up on another guy's forehand on a one-timer side. So, um a little bit of the tough break for our penalty kill and for us when we're trying to uh, survive that and, and, and try to push that thing to a shootout. Jesse Montano, DNBR. 
Uh, Coach, just your thoughts on on how the guys are taking to the new PK system. Big kill late, but still just three for five on the night. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's some good and some bad work in progress. We'll take two more here for Jared. Terry Fry, Colorado Hockey Now. At what, you've challenged Darcy Kemper to be a, to be better, to be better than okay. At what point does it become a concern rather than a challenge? Well, we got to get our team in a rhythm here, and he's got to get playing some games. And I mean, you know, I think that we're pushing all of our guys, not just Darcy Kemper. He's just one piece to you know our twenty-two man roster, or whatever it is we're carrying on, on it, carrying on any given night. So. We're pushing all of our guys to be better and and um he puts a lot of work into his game he's putting in the work and uh, i'm confident it'll come around and um no different than any other player on our team so i get concerned when guys aren't playing their best for long stretches ever it's a long season it's a marathon season you're gonna have ups and downs you're gonna have games where you feel great and you play great and you're gonna have games where you don't feel as good and you got to battle. So I like the way uh, Kemp's has been battling for us. He's been getting us wins on a consistent basis and his record is, is exceptional. And we're sitting in a good spot in the standings because, you know, I can say I feel that way about most of our team or all of our team. And last one here, Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, do you have a sense on the severity of Darren Helm? I do not. No, I do not. I know that he... Uh, got dinged up in the game last night and didn't feel good enough to to play and then uh, they checked on him this morning and um, still was hurting a little bit so I, I couldn't tell you that that'll be one of those things that we'll keep an eye on day to day and uh, hopefully it's not long term I'm not expecting it to be long term but I have no idea if it's going to be a day or two or a week or, or whatever the timeline is all right thank you Jared all right thank you